And that's basically why I think to kill Zora is better than you in oh, every way. Oh, really? You yeah. reckon? That's, yeah, I don't know. He can't hit anything. And yeah. I think... He's I'm, always in a tier six tank, so I don't know I've why. I've already explained it to you, but thank you guys for joining us here at the WGL EU Week 10, day number two. Of course, heated discussions happening off stage. But of course, what is the most important thing right now is to be looking towards this match. It's Caster Crew going up against Woosa. Mm. And we've sort of alluded to it. We've made reference to it. Old rivals, these two, used to be quite closely matched. We obviously Woosa actually represented Germany at the WCG, I believe it was, yep. for what of tanks and performed quite well in that particular tournament here. But times have changed now. Mm. Obviously, uh, this is a little bit of a different lineup now. Some some really exciting new players coming into the fold, but it's been a tough season for them. Yeah, it's been a it's been a pretty brutal season for them. And you know, same as Penta, they're one of their sister teams. You know, a lot of these guys really played offline final season five finals five four result, I believe it was to Cass the crew which put them into um, a good position uh, of day two so yeah pretty good um, pretty good teams old rivals been back and forth for a long time but Wooster just hasn't had the results this season they just haven't managed to get themselves into the game and I think they really do need to step up if they want to stay away from that relegation that automatic relegation zone and look important to point out we still have some excellent players as well in the lineup guys like Stefan who has Ridiculous stats, by the way. It's a solid yeah. player. He's incredible. Fighter Lion is also uh, one of the better players in, in the lineup as well for Lusa. Vet Lion. I'm joking. If you want to call it that. Fight, fight line, yeah. Of course, but Kazza Crew is Kazza Crew. They were like the all star antithesis to Supreme right now. And Melly, that's like. It's on his birthday, I've heard. Oh, really? Yeah. He, but he hasn't, he hasn't been playing for Wusa basically the whole season. He carried last season. Not being here this season. He's busy uh, partying, as it seems. Well, he's got his it's birthday. Bad, he's been partying since. Yes, yeah, since <laughs> the start months. of the season. Okay. Well, well, fair enough. Not? It's a big party. <laughs> I enjoy watching Nipazoni <laughs> play, actually. Yeah, so he's, he's he's awesome. Awesome. Yes, we miss him. Come back. Mm -hmm. One of the best Polish players out there. But let's have a look at uh, some interview videos beforehand. We caught up with Stefan as well whilst he was doing his robot, and he gave us a bit of an insight on Cry this kid. match with Kasna. Kucha! Kasna Crew do not only have some of the best players in the league with people like Elian, Isne or Nexus, but they also have great communication within the team. That, together with the leading of Fiverr, who is arguably the best team captain in the world, makes them the team to beat this season. We will have to play really aggressively against Kasna. We've prepared for that, because if you give them any ground on the battlefield, they will react correctly and punish you for it. Playing Kasna is never an easy game. Of course, playing them more than other teams, it takes away some of our nervousness, but it's always a challenge and we'll go for it. Some, uh, definitely some key words there as well. Kasna with a team to beat. He respects Hyber's tactical mind a lot as well. Uh, you know, Kasna being a team that has been around for yep. Every season, pretty much as well. And they also said they have to be aggressive. They, they, you often hear from teams that know that they're at a disadvantage that they need to go aggressive. They need to catch Kaz and crew out because they realistically can't win in the tactic game. And even with the players they've got, the skill game still goes towards Kaz and crew. They don't have a weak link. Of course, and now we're going to hear a little bit from Kasner while he's not giving interviews. He's off breaking hearts. Vetso had a few opinions about his team's matchup against Wusa. Team Wusa has a couple of players who are probably the most skilled ones in Wargaming League Europe. We need to keep that in our mind and just win them all with our team play and team synergy. Stay tuned for this punishing and enjoy the show. Stay tuned for this punishing, boys. Exactly. <laughs> but so he's, uh, confidence there as well. Yeah. He does highlight something that <clears throat> sort of sorry that we discussed earlier on is that they have some of the best players in the league individually. Yep. But as a team, they have struggled. Yeah. The thing is, it's a team game. It's not like in you know, it's not like you can go one versus five in clutch and you know get like seven kills. It's it's a, it, it's <clears throat> it, it, well, yeah. I mean, okay, Apple has been known to do that. But the thing is, you have to have a few other factors in there. It's a lot more team orientated. So if your team just isn't gelling well and Cancer Crew just haven't gelled well, they haven't been doing any kind of movement that's really been impre impressing us this season, bar, bar that first uh, first couple of match days where they won against No Mercy and, and that kind of thing. Since then, 
really haven't been in the season. All right, Melly, it's that time again. It's cast the crew now going to be going up against Woosik here as well. And where do you sit on this one as well? You're quite torn. I know, uh, you know, you, you, we get along well with the Kasna guys, but I also... I was studying in my Kasna jumper on Wednesday. <laughs> I was, I was like supporting full time on my day off. So... But today, I'm not biased. Yeah? No, of course not. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we're, we're professionals. Of course. So what I, have to, I have to remind you guys a bit more often, as it seems. I think I need it stuck to my face sometimes. Yes. Just so but I, I think Casa Cruel well. did it pretty much hurt Vuza. All right. So you, you definitely think the punishing will be quick? Yes, I think so. Because... Um, as as you as you as you said so fittingly last week, Casa Crew got that monkey off their backs because they showed a brilliant performance last match day, and I think today will not be less. But Vuza, a team that shall not be underestimated, can show up as well, but looks really bad for them compared with the with their other matches the past few match days. Yeah, I think uh, like Penta, they're in a bit of a tight spot at the moment, rebuilding. I think, to be honest, CIS and, and well, I'm going to say Russian because a lot of the Russian teams play in this league, but CIS World of Tanks right now is extremely strong. They're having the, so their sort of waxing where some of our European teams are waning. Caster Crew, one of the last sort of hopes here for, for EU in this season to really bring it back. And what, what more appropriate team? They've got Swedish guys, Finnish guys, Serbians, Croatians, Bosnians. They've got a great mix of an all-star lineup here. And Germans as well. You're dead right. So this is, you know, this is Kazza Crew. We expect to see big things from them right now. We're going to be jumping into the game quite shortly as well. And it's going to be nice. We're going to see a little bit of a different map for this one, yep. ladies and gentlemen. Lakeville will be the one we're checking out here. You know what, actually? Before we talk about it, let's have a look at the video. Lakeville it is. Lakeville, a big summertime map of mixed type. The map can be divided into three parts. The town, the canyon, and the road. The teams start the battle on the opposite sides of the town. One of the bases is located right near the defending team spawn, the other one the bottom of the canyon. Attacks are usually executed through one of the flanks, however, the central pass is also very important. You can get great recon from there. Both heavy and light tanks are commonly brought to Lakeville. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set for our last game of the night and match week 10. Kazna Crew versus Woosa. Woosa are on the attacking side here in blue. Kazna look to defend. So a little bit of background before we get into the action. Um, Kazna Crew 4-0 Ding, who did very well in a 2-2 scoreline against Team Supreme on this map. And uh, just truly an incredible scoreline, while Woosa went 3-1 down against ASAP. So you can see why Kazna Crew has picked this map as their choice. I have fond memories of Still Mojo getting completely wrecked on this map, actually. He's not playing for Woosa. At the or moment. to the analysis desk. Yeah, I like that one. I was, was good. Laughed. It was like good. It. It was good. Anyway, now Rufi, Hallucinogen, and Desnick are all pushing up together and they're just walking into this one. Rufi gets half health right now, trying to put some damage over towards LD Nexus. And it's hard to connect to him right now. But Vetsa also oh, gets caught out a bit as well. A lot of damage. Just super aggressive play from Wooster. This is what Stefan said they will be doing. But will it be enough right now? Vetsa crippled, trying to get away here as Kazna forced to backtrack a bit. Yeah, super um, amount of damage onto Wooster. They've already lost their tier six, which doesn't make a huge amount of difference. But but Eurofish and IS and Elian in the two IS3s are now pushing forwards. You know, of course, you know, you want to have those IS3s as close to the action as possible. Not good snipers, great brawlers, especially against those lighter tanks, which of course Wooter is sporting in full as they do start to rotate up north. Really look at towards where Rufi is. He had the shortest route from south to north, so he'll be the one leading the way as he does look like he's rotating probably towards that middle road. Moving now across. Maybe from not. East to west, and well, it's, it's actually, to be fair, I would have expected that too. He's actually going to head out towards Lemming Valley, as I like to call it here. Lightweights, now it's a little bit boggy, the valley, it's a little bit slower going for these tanks, but uh, you can still get through there fairly quickly. And Rufi now just slowing up a bit, expecting a little bit of caster presence there, but no, they've left most of their stuff back towards their base, and these IS-3s are going to have to respond very quickly if it's going to be a push from the west. So you, they're using the high HP T-54 in the middle, which makes total sense. At the end of the day, in the middle, you're going to exchange. You're going to exchange favorably because you can get control pretty much of every single location on the map. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to receive a couple of shells. Now, Kaz's crew a little bit late to respond there, I have to say. They might get caught out by a very aggressive western side, uh, Wusa. And as you said, Stefan said they needed to be aggressive. Wusa have tried that right side. They're using those lightweights now to go left side as FKK Schnitzel will be ready and waiting with the early spots in the T37. Okay, and already Vetso is lit here for Kaz's crew now. FKK Schnitzel 
Nexus and Hyper getting out on towards that mountain as well, getting that little bit of uh, advantage over here. So we still have to run into this one here. They need to fire on the move if they want to sort of gain some ground. They can't afford to stop and fire for too long. Now, Vetso was low earlier on in the piece. He now is a one shot. He's going to have to back away and just hope he can get one decent shot before he drops down. Caster Crew have a decent lead in health points here. They have that one tank lead. Rufy is the first to get himself on towards his cap here, and he wants to be careful. He's got to slow up a bit before he makes his push. You can see Ely in there in position. He is the closest IS-3 to this fight. But Spoink doing some good work on towards Eurofish here with that AMX 1390. He was in position, patiently waited for shots on towards the finished player, and he'll be rewarded. This is really interesting for Musa. They are not letting up at all. They tried that right side, they tried that left side now, and they're going to be rotating in the middle. This is not something we see a lot of teams do. Usually they decide, okay, we don't have enough time to commit to another location, and they just go for it. But Hallucinogen does get caught out by Elium from behind, so Kansas Crew will know 100% where Wusa and what Wusa will be doing. And I think that's why Wusa is now in a bad position. Now they have basically two options, go through the middle or go through that right side end spoin, because we're doing good work from there. So my guess would be that's where they come from. Do bear in mind that Isne will be sitting there in the T32 as well. Really, really pivotal position for him right now. He's going to be able to hold down behind those rocks, get some shots done, and he cancels out Spoink to a certain degree. Spoink's actually been forced to pull back towards the docks next to the riverside here, so he hasn't been able to go sort of up in these houses near Yisne because of the threat of that T32. It's blind shots are coming out now from Yisne. Often uh, very much a mainstay player for, for Kasner Crew. They use him in a very static way, uh, even on the Ruinberg, uh, uh, Ruinberg, for example. He would be in an IS-3. He'll sit in that middle house and just sort of be, uh, you know, that rock right now for Kasner Crew. And this is no exception looking towards that middle road. Fighter line considering considering pushing up on this one here, but Kasner Crew are really well set up, and Wooster are running out of time to make something happen here. Kasner Crew have gone back to their default location. The only weakness right now is where the cap number two is, because Yisney's the only one who can control that. So if Yisney gets locked down or gets taken down, Wusa will be able to control it pretty easily. But they've also you know, not got a tier 6 anymore, so they won't have a small tank to sit behind a house, which of course let the bigger tanks do the important things like keeping Kansas Crew away, staving them off and doing damage. So this is still a tricky situation for Wusa. And one of the reasons why they need to get A, some information, okay, what's Kansas Crew done as they rotate? Have they rotated? B, Will they come from the north, which is just what they are doing with the FKK Schnitzel, and see, can we do any damage against Yisne? Well, that's a good shot there as Stefan is caught on the cross there. He's tracked up as well. He's now not looking for him right now, though, as he is trying to pay attention over towards Spoink and Dersenichter. The cap has been begun uh, here by Hallucinogen and Rufi over on this eastern side, and most of Castor crew are concentrated to the west. So to get resets here, Eastley has to hull over that hill. It will make him vulnerable to shots coming from this trio of tanks here on your screen. Spoink is definitely looking for an opportunity, as is Stefan and Dersenichter. Hyber is lit, so is Elian and Eurofish. They're pushing in for this one, getting aggressive. Punishment has begun. Yeah, they just want to go aggressive. They got an early advantage, and if, even if Hyber receives some damage, Elian and Eurofish and the two i 3 should be able to exchange well. He's trying to do as much work as he can to keep Wusa from peeking so they don't receive too much damage and they don't go down too early on before they can get the reset. A little bit messy there for uh, Kazda Crew. They take a lot of damage, but they get the reset. That's all they really want now. Wusa have to commit to this. They have to fight. They don't have much time left, and Eurofish and Hyber takes down Rufy Vet Lion. Now, four takes left here for Wusa, and what can they really do here? Ilian and Eurofish are getting aggressive now, pushing up. Smoik has three left in the chamber. Hallucinogen is up towards the side, and Hyber's having a trade at length, even being quite low as Stefan gets the finish. It's got, not going to be enough right now, as he is also very low. Dersenichter as well he sees his buddy hallucinating caught off to the side, and Vetso delivers the killing blow towards him. 254 lightweights left, only 30 seconds, and cast the crew, they're out for the finish. Yeah, Stefan gets taken down by Yisney, one of the players last time from TCM Gaming, one of the crew from TCM Gaming, a true beast, and great to see him joining in. And uh, yeah, of course, there's an Ichter, a player from uh, TCM as well, joining Wusa. A guy I actually met quite a few times. I met him at the Gamescom community party as well. A decent dude and definitely someone who hasn't reached his full potential in Wusa. He did a little bit better in, Kasn in, in TCM gaming back in the day, but it just it just isn't enough to have you know, a couple of good players and no synergy. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, these all-star teams now there are a few of them. Teams are starting to mix and dilute with one another, and the, the talent's there. 
The talent is definitely there. It's just that it takes time. Think about Kazza Crew as well. Uh, their team is so successful on virtual of having a very strong foundation, a very strong exactly. base. The team, the core of the team that was there since the beginning, namely Vetso and Hyber, especially. If you think about all the other guys that sort of had in their team there, mm. sort of Cabralionis, their sort of Palauders, all these guys are there. That's changed a lot now as Elian and, and Co have been brought into the team, yeah. but they still have that strength there from the from the beginning. Yeah, and it's been a slow and gradual change. They've added these players, you know, removing Dark Dawn and Cobrion and you know all those kind of players as we went through the seasons, but it's always been very gradual. Um, so. Yes, they've added new guys, but very slowly they've had time to integrate and it's worked out perfectly. I mean, this season, for instance, Eurofish and Yisney. I mean, I was really surprised that Eurofish was in the Grand Finals lineup, for instance, because I thought he was a very erratic player, obviously very skillful, but a guy who perhaps um, wasted the ability and um, potential of Spala, which was, of course, the Finnish team from back in the day. Same goes for Julian Leprechauns and... Um, you know, good to see him now. He's been, you know, um, basically reined in by Hyber, the, the guy in charge of Kazza Crew and the team commander. And it's working out very well. He did the second highest damage that round, 1.7k in his IS3. Yisni in that hull down position, 1.9k. And despite, FK, uh, despite, I think it was, um, who was that, the IS3? I think it was Zerza Nikta. He did 2.5k in his IS3 for Wusa. Yeah, so definitely, as you said, unlocked potential still maybe it's starting to come to the fore we just need some more time and you know uh, even under the you know the able command of siege we also have a lot of uh, you know, uh, gaps to plug here and they got a chance to do it now of course we're going to be heading into our second round here just a moment again you know Kazakh crew this is a map that they, as you said they they 4 -0 ding on this is very very confident uh, sort of setting for them right now. They're happy with this selection. Let's jump in though and see what they can do now in this second round up against Wusa, who definitely would love, love to pick up an attacking round if they can. Yeah, I mean, Wusa came pretty close. I just think they couldn't commit to a certain location and Kazan crew getting early exchanges just could push down the hill, get the decap whenever they wanted to and take those uh, TFT4s out pretty sharpish. Now, same lineups pretty much from both teams um, and uh, same start for Wusa, same start for Kazan crew. I wouldn't be surprised if Kanzler just try and get the early exchanges again, go for the damage, as Wusa are in a position to do shoot tanks that go from K9, K0, where you do spawn as the defender heading up to the K1 area. Now, they didn't get that, so you didn't get any spots. Immediately, Wusa going up north, which is better, to be honest, because in the previous round, they didn't exchange well. They lost uh, the initial damage, and this time they're not going for that. Kanzler crew are less mobile than Wusa are. So Wusa are opting for, you know, a very heavy lineup of those lightweight tanks here. They really want to be able to rotate around the map here. And it's good. They're just trying to keep Kazza on their toes right now. They're heading towards that northern side here and very quickly, might I add, making their way towards that valley. They'll punch in there. They'll try and do some work. And FKK Schnitzel is going to be the first to get there. Vets on high will also be there. But if they can get this sort of simulated overmatch purely by rotating faster than Kazna crew can, then they can rotate back if they want to. I mean, if they can get the you know, little advantages each time, they have time to do it. They're making quicker decisions now. It's no longer 10 minutes, it's yeah. seven minutes in this game type. So you have less time to make these decisions, which have got to be fast. And Seish is not dead. This the, this time last round, he was dead. He was down on the T-54s of Kanza crew, just canceled them out of the game. That's a huge point. They have a tier six alive. They can hold that right side without having to commit Spoink in the MX-1390. Here come the shots here. It's pretty good so far from Cast the crew, Stefan takes two, and Vetso just gonna run back over that hill like a little mountain goat caught in the headlights. Now those, those two IS-3s are kept far back and FKK Schnitzel getting chunked down a little bit. Vetso takes one shot as well. So we also have a chance to set up here. This is probably the best chance they've had thus far. Those 254 lightweights of, of Kazda crew have been forced to move onto the middle road. They may, may opt for a flank here. It's gonna depend on a few things right now. But Seish is down, so that's sort of the first criteria for Kazda crew right now. There's an issue and Stefan getting aggressive on towards Vetso. They haven't connected one, there's two, there's three. Vetso goes low, four, make it. That is gonna be a very, very quickly downed lightweight. And this is a far better start for Wusa, but they've taken a lot of damage to set up here. But it's a dream start for Wusa. They just need to hold this angle and they should have this under control. The big problem they would have obviously is a two I3s and a T32. It's a very heavy, heavy lineup from Kazda crew. So despite them having lost now a T37 and the T54, 
they can still win this one if they do get into good positions where they can exchange against the lighter tanks of Wusa and uh, basically do double the damage per shell. Look at this though. Wusa have backed off the cap here. They're not going to go for it anymore. Oh, credit to Caster Crew. They did a heck of a lot of damage to Wusa from a, a, a range greater than sort of 300 meters there. You can see the IS-3 is doing serious work. Neldi Nexus and Hyber were just inching around the corner, getting those getting those spots on towards Wusa. And look at this. Spoke and Lucian are backing off. They're getting out of there. Rufik takes a lot of damage as well. Hyber trying to get on towards his lightweights in the background. Wusa are falling apart. Well, the thing is, Rusik, Wusa can't sit, sit in the cap because the two IS-3s are just hold down, just going to punish those T-54s. I mean, 265 penetration on the IS-3 is just going to go straight through, even at awkward angles. Uh, a T-54's um, oh, that's frontal well. armor and Vit Lion taking another shell there in T-54 now down to a one shot and as you said you know Wusa have given away that advantage and despite being still a tank up it looks like they are at a point where they might be broken. Credit where it's due. Wusa have kept to the word of being aggressive, continuing to come forward and try and test Castor Crew's defenses. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it hasn't worked out so far. I mean, they've kind of, yeah, they've rotated around. They've seen them at the north. They've sort of seen them at the south. And they haven't really made a huge impact on either one of these ones. But here we go. Three tanks moving onto the cap here. And F Fighter Line just going to get completely blown up. Rufy now is going to try and use his hull for defense. But this is just a last ditch. A Hail Mary and Castor Crew, they're better than this. But this is what Wusa should have been do doing the whole time. Yeah, okay. You you might lose that one um, tank, but how many times we've we seen a season where teams have thrown one tank away just to get this uh, cap on the way? It's going to force Wusa, um, Kazakar even, 100% to push in this cap. They need to get Yizni around the corner. They need to get him into position where he can shoot the uh, T-54s and the MX-1390. I've seen games won from here, I'll be honest. In fact, Kazakar have won a couple from here, but it's not going to be the same for Wusa. No fairy tale ending for these guys on this round as Hallucinant and Forced to back off his nerve. He's broken Spoik as well. After he sees uh, Rufi go up and smoke in front of him, he will back off. There's an and Stefan are off to the side. They're looking for targets, but really, there's going to be no focus fire. There's going to be no coordination here for Wusa. They're just going to get cut down at the knees. And Kazda Crew again delivering that punishment, exactly what Vetso promised. Well, he is delivering right now. 254 lightweights left. There's an issue is low. Stefan is even lower. Kazda Crew now just picking up those last few, throwing them in the basket and saying, well, we'll move on to the next round here. It's a good start for them as well. Their record on Lakeville has been good, and they, they seem to be continuing that trend. Yeah, this is going very well for Kansas Crew. Um, this one was a lot closer than the previous round, but still quite convincingly going to them, despite, you know, having actually been at a disadvantage for a fair period of this round. As does, an, does find Nexus there, one of the star players from Kansas Crew, but it's obviously not going to be enough. Finally, another one. This is going well for Dursi Nichter. He might just catch them by surprise. Two frags for him, making Kansas Crew look a little bit stupid, but finally does get caught by the IS-3's BL9, 122 millimeter shell. And uh, it will be a second round for Kazza. That's right. On the defensive side as well, no less. So this is a good start for Kazza. It's probably how they would have liked it to have gone. But this is Kazza for you. I mean, uh, I use Ruhlenberg as a more prolific uh, example of this behavior. But up until last week, they were not winning those attacking rounds on, on maps like that. This has been a bit different, of course. Their performance against Ding was commendable. Yeah. We used to look like they're happy to be more aggressive now. But what? They were aggressive on the attacking side. It's not going to pay off. You can see this as well. This was a last ditch effort. This really, uh, yeah, I was not convinced by this at all. Well, the problem is for Wusa, right? They got the early advantage. They sat in the cap, which was the right thing to do, but they just moved out of the cap. So they already lost so much damage by pushing themselves into the cap. Then they went, they realized their mistake went back in. They realized they couldn't rotate. And yeah, I mean, this is going to be game over. Also, you got to, you got to consider Kaza crew have been in this position where they won this scenario before which Woos is currently in so they know how to counter it you know they got the two ice trees in perfect locations they can shoot the the wreck in front they're using he ammo they're just penetrating the top of Schwank's turret there yep. alien doing two and a half k damage so those two despite having inaccurate guns they can get the resets continually and they did as well. I think Wusa were surprised with how much damage Kazan were able to continue to put over towards him when those IS-3s were at fair distance. I mean, what's it, 330, 360 metres view range? 330 right? metres view range on the it's not. It's not a lot. It's rubbish. So It's, <laughs> it's yeah, really bad. Yeah. So it's tough for them, obviously, to get the spots. I mean, the 32s is marginally better. It's not great. Yeah. Uh, so maybe Wusa thought that they're going to have to get closer. They're going to have to give up those hold down positions if they want to get the spots here. Mm. But no, they were lit. The Wusa were pretty much lit the whole time and they just got crushed. Yeah, I think I think Wusa had the right idea. I mean, they would have loved to have a bigger tank. I think, you know, a 5100 could have worked in that situation because, yeah, you got the 5100. You think, okay, so they got 5100. They want to go to that right side. Maybe want to go for the brawl in the city. But you actually put it on the left side. Still pretty quick. You got smooth ride on there. Um, and you can sit it in the cap, put it to the side, 
put the TFT4s, the MX-39s behind it and you should just be about okay. But it's a risky maneuver where you do give up a huge tank for a potentially just Kazakh crew to come barreling through the two I3s and T32. So it's, like, like it's like using a tog on Himmelsdorf as well. Yeah. Uh, Penta's going for that strat. It's, it's all well and good, but there's only... You can't really move that around. Like it's it's just there, so yeah. it's not always worth sort of giving up that tank for that sort of scenario here. And Kazda crew, the punishment has begun. It's not too bad started all from them, and a lot of people surely at home would have been expecting this melee as well. I'd love to hear what the vote is, especially with both of these teams with very strong community followings. Yes, they. Um, I was about to say that usually Vuza has a very strong fan base right behind them. I mean, right before the match, when you had a look on Twitch chat, it was all Vuza, 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 yep. cover pride and whatever. And um, but the vote is 97% for Kazna crew. So. Yep. Kazna's fans yes. are out in force, I believe. And they yes. are fanatic as well. Kazna fans are intense. Yeah, yeah they are pretty. They're very serious that's about true. it. But. Okay, so fair enough. So 97 to 3. That's a, solid, that's a solid number. But people can keep voting though, can't they? Absolutely. The vote is open until the second map starts. So head over to facebook.com slash WGLEU and get in your votes if you haven't voted already for next time, which is next week, sadly. Keep in mind... The earlier you vote, the higher chances are because the first three correct predictions will be rewarded with a bonus code. And if we have a closer look on um, the predictions, there are rarely 5 nil predictions so far. So let's see what we're seeing. Some faith in Wu, so let's see if they've got what it takes to justify that one, Oliver. Kazda crew with two rounds on the attacking side now, and FKK Schnitzel going for a bit of a scouting run. I mean, I always get confused when I see FKK for Kazda. I'm like, why are Wusa playing the attacking <laughs> yeah. side again? But of course, you know, he's moved over to um, Kazda crew since uh, season five, so he's going very well for him. He's playing very well, but FKK super aggressive, catching out Siege early on. Siege got a back away after that shell from an IS3, I believe, and FKK does get found by. Does Anichta from the side? I don't think Kazakh crew or well, FKK predicted the aggressive IS3s. He got double tapped actually. Two IS3s poked around and took he, him he out. He just reversed too much, or he went just went forwards too much and got taken down. Yeah, I don't know if it's really worth it now. Siege is still alive, but here's that spearhead of Kasna. Lightweight, so you're going to straight towards Shefan as well. He just realized this is happening. He's going to back up very, very quickly. He's on the he's on the S key as hard as he possibly can, but he should be caught right now as well. There was a third tank there as well. Shefan gets around a corner. He realizes that Hyper is set up to take him down. Great catch by Kazna crew. Made up, of course, for them losing FKK Schnitzel. And they can now set up over towards this side of the map here. How will Rusa respond? This is perfect stuff for Kazna crew. They got the initial exchange. Elian with a fantastic shell onto Spoink to keep him aware of things. And now Vetso hold down against Spoink. He might fall here if he doesn't be careful 268 penetration on that thing can definitely cut through the t54 like it's wet paper but vetso and the the force of the is3s of cancer crew are keeping wooster's is3s hold um locked down so they're winning pretty much every front right now still mojo fighting against his clan mates in this particular game as the leader of the kasna clan but uh, Ilian now just bouncing off his head a little bit there. Still Mojo always confident and comfortable in an IS3 providing he's not dealing with the entire enemy team barreling at him. This time he has Durs Anishta for a little bit of backup. And, well, he's shown himself to be reliable thus far. And we can see the Woos are getting cut down though. You can see, especially over towards their cap, that triple lightweight setup is just making mincemeat of Woos. Well, I thought uh, Spoink was in an AMX 5100. Actually turned out he was an AMX I thought he said 263 penetration. Like, I'm not going to correct him, but... Uh, 244, like, oh, fair enough. That was my bad. But, um, you know, it would have obviously been a lot more one-sided if I knew it was AMX 3090. Vetso mm -hmm. had, like, every possible advantage, basically. Just, you know, you saw the T30 just going down as Kazza crew know they got a significant advantage. They're not even going to go for the cap, they're just going to go for the kills. Yeah, why not? That's a Kazza way of doing it. Their hallucinogen is very, very low. One's going to bounce off his turret there. Fetso can't even connect that shot high, but luckily will be there to fix that little error. And still Mojo is going to find himself to center on by the entirety of Kazza crew right now, and so will Durs initially. This is going to get ugly for those two there. Wooster again, fall apart. Kazza crew just getting to do exactly what they want right now. It's all played into their hands. They managed to do what Wooster couldn't by getting those 54 lightweights in towards that cap number one and making a real, real impact with them. Yeah, so, so simple from Kazna crew. Like, you know, they were really aggressive. I think the difference, the key difference between what Wooster and Kazna did on the attacking side is that Kazna crew came from two fronts. Right. They used the the attributes, the, the good attributes of the IS-3s, the heavy tanks for um, Kazna to where they basically should be, the city, you know, put them there. You're going to have to have a situation where Wusa pushes all their tanks onto those IS-3s to take them down in good time. Or 
you're going to come from the left side at the same time and also take down whatever's defending there. So Kazda coming from both sides is very advantageous. I love Hyber's positioning here. He's off to the left. He can't see him, but Stefan thinks he's safe and Hyber catches him out. And this is that, it's that one pick as well. Now talk to me about this triple IS3 set up here for Kazda crew over on this side, on the eastern side of the map. Is this, is this common? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty common. Uh, the thing is, um, Woos is really slow to respond. Like, yeah. okay, so you know, Kaz you know, Kaz got, got, Kaz has got three tier eights that are pushing that uh, number one cap, that western side cap. So you know you've got the overmatch in the city. Right. Kaz is sitting back with the IS3s in positions where you do have to flank, you have to get around them to take them down. But still, you should be able to push in, take them down, because you're going to lose either way. Well, you, you're more likely to lose if you don't push in. They do sure. eventually push in, but the T-32s get sniped, Lucian gets sniped. This should just be a situation where Woos is pushing in, taking these three down, removing them from the game, and then worrying about the T-54s capping. Because doing neither is not going to win you the match. And looking through the damage quickly, 2.1k from Vetso, Hyber with 2k, Ken Nexus with 1.8k, and only still Mojo doing one and a half thousand damage with his IS3. And that's right. And actually, this, besides still Mojo and Dezenishta, no one on Wusu got more than 500 damage. Stefan, 485. Hallucinogen, 478. Spoink, 470. It's two shots from a lightweight. It's not enough. They were jumped on here as well. I mean, you know, Stefan got so caught out there as well. I understand that it would have been hard for him to spot Kazakh crew moving up the valley. He was the only lightweight yeah. that was there. Shouldn't there have been a T-37 or another sort of scout tank checking that part of the map? But it was normally Siege, I think, would be in that role. Yeah, the thing is, you, you, you had two tanks there. You had Spoink and you had Stefan. So you got a two two tank situation. You look what Kanzaku had three T54 lightweight. So immediately, like you're in a two versus three situation. If you think about what the roles and what the tanks play sure. on the map. So like if you have T54s, you, you're more likely to see them over towards that uh, valley side. So you immediately put yourself at disadvantage. Okay, but you think about that. Then you got the heavy. You got a lot more heavy tanks towards that eastern side. Like you got to push that advantage. Then if you're going to give it away, you know we've seen the 416 for instance with a T37 which is when a loose position so you can quickly react. Yep. And then you have like a T-54 up there or an IS-3. So I think, you know, you saw Wusa just putting all their resources into every single location on the map, but not enough resources in one to push for an advantage. So they spread themselves like, you know, not enough butter over too much bread. Kazna were able to sort of watch their flanks as well. Was the did, What's the difference? Because Kazna managed to be watertight on their defensive side. Well, the difference is Kazna crew, they react very quickly. Right. They, they react before they the other team is even you know they react before they know what the other team is doing so after a few seconds they see they're not spotting an x y and z they're seeing that wooster has you know retracted so they're thinking okay where they're going to come from well let's leave a tank in a position that can play very defensively aka yisni and the t32 hold down and let's remove all of our tanks from their positions they're in now, put them in defensive position towards that western side, ready for the most obvious push would be, which is the trench side. So you got, you know, very quick reactions from Kazakh crew, which precede what Wusa is currently doing. Again, he's knee. The solo Swede for Kazda Crew is in that IS-3 along with Eurofish and Ilion and they have pushed up in that center spot. So again, FKK Schnitzel comes forward. Not perhaps as aggressive as last time. The blind shots just miss him. I don't know how he got away with that one. Sometimes you just get lucky. Uh, well, there's a common uh, mistake a lot of people do with blind shots. They shoot too far up above the bush. It's when you're looking through your binoculars, whatever, um, your, your shift, um, there's a, a temptation to shoot too high, but actually you should shoot lower than you think. Um, and I think maybe that's one of the mistakes they made there by Wusa. Or they were just on the move and they didn't manage to connect shells, one of the two. Yeah, a lot of players don't like the idea of their shot dropping short, but you do need to put that reticle a little bit lower. There's always going to be a little bit of RNG involved. Now, 5G line is actually pushed up here in a more defensive position. So Wusa now with a bit of an adaptation to shore up their defenses, but it does mean that they don't have the capacity now to push in towards the city. And that's probably not such a bad thing now because they can use those IS-3s slow as they may... Sorry, those T-32s, no IS-3s this time, hmm. uh, to sort of, you know, be able to defend a bit more. So you definitely can see they don't want to brawl so much. Let's see how they want to play this out. The interesting thing is that they got a T-54 over towards that western side. Now, that's probably just there to spot out anything that comes through. You need FKK Schnitzel with binos and coated optics just to spot, you know, where and what resources Kaz uh, Wusa has in the middle. 
But the TFT4 is just to see, okay, is Woos going to rotate around? If they are not, then you can push the IR3s further into the city without, without worrying about Woos coming from two angles. One angle, which is, of course, that western, uh, the southern side with the heavy tanks, and, of course, two, the northern side with the lighter tanks. So I like the way Woos is playing. They'll need to retract that TFT4 at the latest possible moment so it can join up in the middle and they can have a concerted push around the corners. This round playing out a little bit slower than the ones prior. With Siege and FKK Shintalab both taking a little bit of damage here. Probably from blind spots for the most part. As Kasta Crew now going to push the duo. Hyber and Nexus on towards that middle road. And Vetso as well is pushed up here. I love how they use these trio of lightweights. It's just poetry in motion sometimes. It really is. He's looking for Siege right now. And uh, he won't find him. He's going to throw a bit of a cheeky shot over towards Stefan, who was lit for a brief period. And also gets a Eurofish and Yuzne. Their positions are revealed right now to Wooster. So Kasna had to be careful about this one. They also know when they're lit, of course, Sixth Sense is going to indicate to them that they have been detected by enemy tanks. So it's going to impact the way they play. It makes a huge difference. It's always their first crew skill to grind. Take my word for it. Now with four minutes left and Kasna crew slowly inching their way up here. They'd love to go 4-0 on this one yet again. But Wooster definitely going to dig their heels in a bit more this time. Yeah, Wusa are uh, uh, really holding more classical angles. They've got a pretty standard setup. Um, no 416, of course, which is quite regular. Um, and with this setup, they really do make it awkward for Kansas Crew to, to win an exchange. I think the most normal and the most typical exchange would be them to come around the corner on that right side and try and do as much damage as possible. Keep the TFT falls in the middle to exchange against Siege. See where they're being spotted from. If they do get the spots on them, they know that it must be a tank further forwards. And that's why Siege just fell. So this is the advantage Kansas Crew want and they'll go forwards with it. All right, Vetso does take a hit and so does Hyber. I'm going to back up a little bit here. A bit of a shout out to Fight Lion as well because he has two lions on the side of his tank <laughs> and they're blue. So maybe he's trying to apply to their wet. Bit of a shout out towards Ollie there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, very cute. God damn it. I mean, one little <laughs> mistake and I get, all, I get basically a cult following behind me saying a name wrong. Yeah, that's right. But Vital, I think Fighter Line appreciates it, though. We know what his <laughs> donation sound is. So Rufy's now set up in this little spot with the T32. Interesting use of this tank. Um, if you're trying to use, work around corners, it's not the tank you want to take normally. It's always hull down. Better off with an IS-3 here, in my opinion. Now, he's taking a fair bit of damage because the hull of the 32 is kind of meh. It's not very strong at all. And he's still holding a position, but he's taking a lot of damage from the middle of the map. you got to remember, though, he's pointing up towards a hill, so he is actually hull down. But he's just not in a... He's, 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 he's not in a good position because he isn't keeping that front of the hole safe, basically. And he's, he's also pointing the side of his track, so the T32 is very weak from the side. He is staying alive, which we've seen a lot of teams not achieve. The good thing now for Wusa, though, they are starting to lock that clock down. And unless Kansas Crew goes forwards, it's going to be hard for them to win. Well, I think this is where they start to do that now. As Spoink and Hallucinogen will be the first, <coughs> excuse me, first line of defense for Wusa here. As they wait on the approach of Yuzna, Eurofish and Alien. Shots coming towards Alien. There's only one really connecting and only towards the tracks. Those numbers coming up in blue. That is bad news for Wusa right now. It's easily ducked around for his own shot. Nexus, Hyber, from the middle of the map, doing so much freaking work right now. Even Vetso can poke around and get some damage done. Hallucinogen does go down. Fight the line trying to push up and do some work here. But it's a little bit too little, too late. He's really low on health right now. And even Hyber shuts him down. Kazda Crew had the perfect crossfire on this map. And Wusa just have to watch as they get deleted from this one. He's there moving forward. This point does go down. It's just Dirge and Nicta. And he is the dead man as well. 4-0 for Castor Crew. I mean, they took their time on this one. This is this is far better than what we've seen from them past times. I wish it would have been like this against Supreme. We would have seen some different stuff. You said before, Castor Crew have to take this game seriously. They also have to take the next game seriously if they want that shot at that second place. It seems like they aren't taking any prisoners here. Definitely not. 4-0 score, unbelievable. They're writing the textbook on how to play, uh, textbook on how to play Lakeville. Truly insane, insane stuff. It really does, it really does play to Kansas Crew's strengths, which is of course being very dynamic, being fast, being well coordinated, having good positions coming from many angles at the same time to meet the same point at the same time. So it's, it's fantastic um, stuff from this team. I think Wusa didn't provide anything. They didn't didn't go forward. They didn't find a weakness and, and really engage. And another thing I want to mention, you know, FKK Schnitzel staying alive on the flank, making sure that the clock doesn't work in favor for Wusa because, of course, you know, one minute in 30 seconds was around where Wusa lost that round. Yep. If they had rotated, you know, a low HP tank up and towards that western side, they could have just run away from Kazakru to bring a draw, which, of course, on the defensive side in 754 is a win. So massive shout out to keeping FKK Schnitzel alive and keeping the, the flank safe. 
Yeah, well, I mean, talk to me about this T32 as well. I think it was Rufy in the back corner. Yep. I mean, he got the most damage on his team there. I, we understand why this position is used quite commonly. Um, well, should he have just kept his head down? Is this is this a good allocation of resources uh, by Woosa? It seems like they set up, on their defensive side, they set up and try and be a bit cute and hope Kazna crew just, like, impale themselves on their own fingernails or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it, what, this doesn't say much to me as well. They're trying to push up here, but Kazna crew already had the setup. Woosa are pushing into Kazna's set play and not the other way around. Exactly. And there's no pressure from Woosa. If Rufi had support from Lucinogen and Spoink, yeah, it would have been a different situation. But Rufi trying to peak, trying to keep Kazza crew at bay is really what he's supposed to be doing. Instead, you know, I think Kazza, Wusa saw what Kazza did last round. In, in the first round we saw when they're defending, they're just pushing straight off down that hill. But it's completely different positions. Kazza weren't going for that cap for a single second of that round. They were just going for the damage. So, I don't know. I just, again, think that Wusa didn't do anything in this round. They didn't have any pressure on... And uh, yeah, of course, and that's going to give you, uh, and it's going to give Kansas Crew uh, a solid win. So, Lakefield done here. We're going to be moving on to steps. And, you know, we, we talked about this as well, and Melly was saying beforehand as well that, like, Kaza's, Kaza's Lakefield has always been good to watch. It's not a map we get to see all that much of, really. Uh, like we were saying before, is some teams have mines as their pocket map. Kazna seems so confident here uh, on Lakefield. Vote was way in their favor. Can't really blame people still about is. that. <laughs> it still is. And I looked through the entries and still there is no shift in variation. We have a very, very close prediction. Actually, 5-0 predictions got more towards the end. Okay. People at home currently in the first, uh, fourth map. And uh, yes, that was the first map. The second one will be Steps. And we saw Kazna playing on Steps pretty well, actually, as well, right? Yeah. 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 It's been alright. Yeah. It's, right. it's, be, it's been there. They haven't played that much, and like their biggest result was against Virtus Pro, where they lost. But I can see why Wusa would pick up this map. Um, they have a good potential here to win a couple of rounds back. But you know, it's still four rounds for Kansas Crew to fall, even on steps, which maybe hasn't been their best map. It's going to be pretty unlikely. Woosa have nothing to lose right now. They really Absolutely don't. I mean, not. I've seen their... Their steps play has been interesting. Woosa will employ IS-3s on this map. They will push aggressively onto caps it's with the these. the second most played map, yeah. There you go. So that's, that's our thoughts on it anyway, Melly. Yes, and currently the voting situation is still stuck at 97%, which is pretty, pretty clear. People, if you haven't voted yet, head over to our Facebook page. We'll be heading into a short break until we uh, will battle it out on the second map. So enough time for you guys to get in your last second votes if you haven't already. Facebook.com slash WGLEU. Choose your favorite team, predict the scoreline, and then send it off. Hope for the best at this point. Next time, you might want to get involved a bit earlier. Other way of getting involved is, of course, our hashtag WGLEU. And as said, thank you so much for every everything you send through those uh, channels to us, all the comments and all the tweets. We love reading from you. So as said, we'll be back with Vuza versus Castle Crew on Steps in five minutes.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the WGL EU Week 10 match day number two. And we are on the pre precipice of a potential combination of this match here. Yep. It's 4-0 in favour of Kasna Crew. A great start for them on Lakeville. It's their second 4-0 on this map. And they're you know flying high with confidence right now against Woosa. Yeah, they're going to go into steps at a 4-0 scoreline, as you mentioned. Of course, you know, steps being... Wooster's second most favorite map after Himmelsdorf. So, of course, we got a chance here for Wooster to make a comeback. Mm -hmm. They did well against, for instance, Synergy going 2 2. Did well against ASAT going 3 1. Went 3 0, 3 1 down against Virtus Pro. That's to be expected uh, when you consider that they're obviously one of the strongest teams in the world and Absolutely. went f uh, 4 5 against Team Supreme in the uh, match earlier today, the first match of today. So, yeah, okay, we can say roughly that Wooster, especially with Ruffy playing the artillery, could pick up a win or two here, but still, it's very unlikely. As we said time and time again, we haven't seen a 4 0 comeback this season so far. That's right. And having a look at the way that Woos is playing right now, confidence probably isn't high. Not from our, not from our sort of quarters, probably not from theirs as well. Mm. It's been a tough season now. This will put them at 2 and 8 for the season. Mm. Those two wins were like the first two matches of the season. Yep. Synergy and um, No Mercy, I believe. Like, they started so well. I was like, this is going really well for Woosa. They, they got what looks like a solid lineup. You know, they got a lot of good players in there. This is going to go awesome. Yeah, cool. Go team Woosa. And then they were like 2-1. 2-2, two, 2-3, two, two, and I was like, oh my god, this is just, this is going atrociously. Yeah, it was Ding and No Mercy. Uh, Ding and No the, Mercy, the first, the first two yeah, weeks, you're right. You're, yeah. um, they were, I mean, the first one was a tiebreaker against No Mercy as well, so, yeah. you know, I, we haven't really seen a super dominant performance, except that 5-2 against Ding in yeah. week two. Since then, but that's also, those two matches, that match might have been one of the crucial, most crucial matches. Like, that's when Wusa started to go downhill, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why Ding isn't in a good position this yep. season. Absolutely. Now, so obviously moving on to Seps, which we've already sort of seen a little bit of uh, tonight. Um, let's, uh, what are your thoughts on this one as well going into this? Because obviously we, we were expecting... We're expecting to see Kasner sort of pull the same sort of stuff they do. Woosa has had some success on this map. Their aggressive pushes on towards the eastern side cap with IS3 has actually worked out a couple of times. Is that going to work against Kasner crew? Um, I don't think so. We, we saw the IS6 push, I believe, from Wooster as well. It might have been, I think it was that team. Yes, it was. Yeah, the IS6 yep. push straight through the middle got actually... Wrecked, absolutely wrecked. And oh, um, the, is this of the weak spot at the front on the hatch? No, it's just the turret. Okay. It's, it's just so weak, and it, it got penetrated from a lot of angles. And it's just good setup by the defensive team. But yeah, I don't know. We have to see, of course. You know, we got uh, Wusa on the defensive side, Kaz the crew going on the attack. Definitely not one of Kaz the crew's most um, favored maps. Only five rounds a season. Probably after that atrocious um, beating. Verse Pro did against them. They got a three 0 despite you know doing a very good job on Mines, which is of course that first map all the way back in the first match day of the season. So they've been avoiding it completely. We'll have to play it this time round. Let's see how they do. I wouldn't be surprised if Kazan just go for the throat here. You got a T32 on the board and an M44 for. A Woosa here, whereas Kazan are opted for the LTTB WZ131 combination here, which they use those two tier sevens so well, so often. It's FK Cation, it's and Eurofish on those ones at this stage. So let's see, Spoik up in that, well, we coined it as the Ruster spot for quite some time now. That's where he's going to be now as the push comes on here. It's not super aggressive. Kazan crew just back and forth here. Spoik gets side shots though. They have to move. They have to do something about that. Well, good shots on towards Rufy though. If they can cancel him out early here, it's going to be a crippling blow to Woosa. Yeah, it's going to be a massive blow. Um, yeah, okay, Kazan crew are using using those light tanks, but we've seen in these kind of close quarter environments and um, with a lot of tanks near each other, the M44 can be quite reliable and do a lot of damage. You're talking about 700 average damage from that uh, artillery shell. We do have a shell coming in right now, doesn't connect as the cancer crew do get the initial exchange, goes pretty well. And they will be reversing, of course, yeah, using the LTTP WZ131 combo. Of course, the LTTP more for um, being a kind of all-rounder WZ131 for just the damage with that 80 millimeter, just insane DPM. One of the league's most open maps here. Steps doesn't give a heck of a lot of protection to artillery on the northern side, especially where Rufi is set up here. You can see a lot of Wooster are rallying to his position and getting up close and are sending still Mojo forward in that T32 to try and hold down, to try and put some pressure on. So Kazna crew, the initial push, not maybe working out the way they would have liked, but they're heading towards the middle road here. They're not going towards the west. So this could be interesting. Let's see what they try and set up. FKK Schnitzel is the vanguard right now. He's at the front. He's just be able to spot out a few tanks in that position. Stefan is lit and remains lit for the moment. 
And uh, Spoink is up in that little spot, still hasn't moved from there. So depending on where Kazdakou try and push, they can cancel him out in that position. They can make him far less useful right now. They've got to make their way all the way towards the north, and they use that road to go undetected until right about now. Yeah, I really like the way FKK Schnitzel is playing this. You know, the T37 actually has pretty much worse camo value than the LTTB. So yeah, okay, they might be able to, might not be able to put it in the cap and have that DPM, but FKK can be an aggressive spotter, which is really helping Kazna in the more information game as they do try and exchange in the middle. They will do some damage against Seish and he has to be careful. This is a little bit weird, actually. As Vesho and Eurofish takes some hits, Seish, though, does get chunked down. It's good shooting from Kazna right now. They just need to keep it up. The War of Attrition just chunking away at Wusa, and then they can go in for the kill right now they're not really able to and unfortunately it's another unconnected shot coming from Rufy there he's trying but the crew thus far are so mobile they're so dynamic in those light tanks that they're able to avoid the shelling from the M44 you see Eurofish there does take a hit he's forced to back down he is super low right now Kazda would hate to lose him right now if they want to play this rotational game they need every piece on the board they can't afford to lose any at this stage. So Eurofish is going to back away. He might even start to tickle that cap a little bit and force a little bit of a poke up from Wusa. A yeah, really good thing as well. Kazakuro is rotating down the south, so they have a lot of angles covered. You see quite a few teams go to the kind of K5-6 area up and towards it. Oh, that's unbelievably lucky for Eurofish. He gets tracked as a one-shot. And to be fair, if he goes down, Wusa will have an advantage. They will have that tank advantage. And I'm sure they will play for it. I think this is going Wooster's way right now. It's obviously very close, but still Mojo's playing well in that T32 being a turret for his team. Kanzaku don't really seem to know where to come from. And it does seem that Eurofish and the last play from Kanzaku will be to try and distract Wusa, have them to do the blind shots whilst the T54s come from above and try and circle in to take down Wusa in a brawl situation. Yeah, when Eurofish is essentially a non-factor now on the map, this is probably the best use of that tank just to use it to try and accrue those capture points now. And he has attracted the attention uh, for of Wusa for long enough now for Kazza to get in position. But, you know, the proof is in the pudding. It's going to be in the execution. And Kazza need to do that. They need to close things out here. Look at Vetso as well. He's still in the north and not, Hyber will be joining up with him. Maybe even a little bit of a two-pronged assault. They might be looking towards still Mojo, trying to cancel him out, get him off the map. And they could work on towards the rest, but it looks like it might be a head-to-head -head here. Great shots on towards Spoink there. And here we go. It's going to be messy right now. Vetso is going to be dealing with the brunt of Wusa right now. As three of their lightweights get in behind him. They're looking for the reset here, I guess, eventually. And they're going to go. But Rufy gets taken down early. There's a casualty for Wusa. Now, he's in the FKK Schnitzel and Nexus all moving in. This is going to get messy. Siege goes down. Spoink is low. He's a one-shot. Still Mojo isn't far away. They're going straight on towards that T32. And still Mojo again has to watch as his teammates come forward and take him out there. Well, 7v7 and Claymore are two very different beasts right now, and Kazakura is showing no signs of that allegiance that is pre-existing, working their way over towards Stefan and Dezernicta now. They're taking a lot of damage, and Kazakura just going to win the head-to-head. -head. They managed to do this every single time. FKK Schnitzel gets in there with the LTTB, gets behind Stefan. Nexus finishes him off there as Yulfish does go down, but Kazakura have five tanks. Wusha have two. They're running out of time, and Dezernicta as well. He is completely surrounded right now. That crazy bounce. I don't know what's going on. FKK Schnitzel does go down, but Kazakura are going to be able to roll over the top. Yeah, game over for Wusha. This is a super Super good game from Kazakru, winning every single advantage, going from one stage, from stage to stage to stage, and getting everything ticked, everything crossed, and 5-0 scoreline going through through to Kazakru. Old rivals against Wusa, clearly now dominating the scene, and they will be pushing themselves up into that third spot. So, massive congratulations to them. Of course, not that second spot quite, next, quite yet. We'll see if they can do that against Tornado Rocks next week. One big step in the right direction here for Kazda Crew. You can see tonight's games have had a huge impact on the scoreboards thus far, and even with Virtus Pro having their decent, uh, decent performance, of course, in that tiebreaker, they'll shift down now as well, even with Synergy, their equal fourth. Kazda Crew moving up there in third place, and whew, intense stuff. I mean, it's crazy. We've had two nights here this week of a very close game, and then two not-so-close ones here, but Melee Kazda Crew have done it yet again, performing stellar. Absolutely. I mean, it was just br brilliant play without any hesitation. They stomped pretty much Vusa. Sad to say, but it has to be said. Is, is has, it has, it has to, be? to be said. Said, yeah. Well, sorry. Well, people, you voted correct. The vote started out with 97% and continued throughout the whole phase of first uh, of the first map and the f uh, first break. Um, still stuck with 97%. So people, you knew it from the beginning that it's going to be really, really clear. It's a bit sad for Vuza, to be honest. I, I feel, but, well, gets me a little 
I must say. Good, I mean, good yeah, it's, yeah, it's really Kessie sad Welling. to see. I mean, as you guys said, they started out so well. They they were so good the first two weeks, and we're like, yay! They pull it together. They somehow. Uh, well, they always had like good and bad phases of their of their plays, as as it seems. Yeah. The WCG qualifier they've won in Germany, I think Gamescom 2014 last year in Gamescom, right? And then the the wild card um, to the grand finals. But it, it feels like when they have to perform, they kind of crumble, and that's really sad to see because it's such a good team. They they have good players, and. Now it's up to them to focus and to see where those uh, critical points are sitting to kind of get rid of them and hopefully have a better season next time if they manage to stay in the season. For Wusa, yeah, they should just be, uh, the they should just be writing off this, uh, this season, saying, okay, like we didn't do well. Yeah. Let's not split up the team. Let's keep it together. Let's look at our mistakes. Let's not tilt like we did this season. Stay, I mean, win I the relegation match and then look at the next season with your heads high and actually go into that one properly prepared and you know get a good start. That's, that's how Kasner got to where they are, by the way. Exactly. Exactly. They, they stuck together. A lot of teams, um, well, if they perf if they don't perform, at, at first try, it seems, they get themselves new players, to, that carousel gets uh, gets rolling and new players in, old players the out and whatever. Analyst. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They're trying and trying and trying and most of the teams get out of focus because um, a good team builds up on synergy and only on skill. If you put like all those high skillers together, it doesn't make a good team um, at all. Yeah. We saw, uh, we've seen that a lot of times organizations trying to get those superstars crunch into a team and it doesn't, it simply doesn't work out. So they have to train, they have to find that synergy, they have to stay together. Hopefully they won't, they won't change too much. I bet they will because that, that's what teams do after yeah. an unsuccessful season. But yeah, let's see what next season brings, sadly. Well, let's have a recap of tonight's game. So give you guys a bit of a heads up on what you saw. If you missed any of it, you can always check out our VODs. We do upload them uh, on our YouTube channel. But of course, Oliver, we started off tonight with a cracking game. Supreme and Virtus Pro. What a match. And living up to expectations um, by an absolute country mile. Fantastic, fantastic game. Of course, Virtus Pro just losing out nar narrowly on that tiebreaker map of steps. Just not quite having what it takes. Just bad execution in that last engagement. The brawl just going all in and also playing that last round on mines a little bit substandardly. Next match, Strong Siemma versus Synergy. It looked to me like Synergy had prepared to the absolute T. They knew they needed to win this match if they want to have a, a good chance of, first of all, being in the playoffs in like a solid position or maybe even getting to that second place spot. But third and final match, Cancer Crew have secured themselves third place. And if next Tuesday, should of course be the last match uh, week, um, obviously match yeah. week 11, the first part of it. We'll see them going against Tornado, which will be another match of the season. We, we keep changing our match of the season match every of the week. Season. This one's the match of the season. No, this one definitely is the match of the season. Let's have a little bit of a look at those matches coming up on Tuesday night because these are the ones that are really going to be, you know, influencing who finishes where. Mm. Virtus Pro against Utopia will be kicking that one off. Yeah, so Virtus Pro again, they need to get that win in the bag. Um, because they didn't lose, they didn't win today. They only got one point, so that's 21. So they basically put Kansa Crew in the, in the perfect situation to take them over. If Kansa gets the three points against Tornado, um, which which is t entirely possible if they play like they did today, and I hope they take that match very seriously. Tornado at the same time, they know they can get overtaken in third place, um, in second place because they had a couple of reschedules. So the actual game between Kansa Crew and them is the last match of the season. So a lot on the line next week and No Mercy versus Ding, I don't know. I think Ding is a hard chance to get into the um, the playoffs depending on how the other teams perform. Yeah, you're exactly right. So uh, being in seventh place, I think currently Ding is. Um, yeah, yeah, eighth, but no, place. eighth, eighth place. place. So they've got to make their way back up there. They're an outside chance. We're going to have to wait and see how that one sort of plays out there. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a fantastic night of games. Again, another night of contrasts here. It's funny how this seems to work out. But Tuesday night is going to be the comment or well, the beginning, I guess, of our final week of the WGL EU Season 1 for 2015 and 2016. Huge games, especially Tornado Rocks, Kasner. You cannot miss that one. Lawrence should be back for that one, so it should be a great one. I can sit back with my cup of tea and watch. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, good night, good game. We'll see you next week.